which vaccine should they try and take? Should they wait for a private vaccine to come along, pay extra money? Is it worth the wait? Or should they just go with whatever the government puts out first? And what is the guarantee that whether it's the Sputnik, the Russian vaccine, it's been tested fully in the same manner as, say, a Pfizer or a Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has? Now, these are questions that are swirling through people's head. Can you share your thoughts on whether they should wait for a private vaccine or give what the government gives or take what the government gives? And how do you compare the different nations and how those vaccines have been trialed in their countries because everybody doesn't have the same standards? Well, let us get one thing straight. Uh, all the efficacy data that we have seen so far is efficacy by press release. Efficacy by press release is for shareholders. It is for the stock markets. Let us wait for the scientific data to come out, and some of it is beginning to come out. Point number two, it's very hard to say that vaccine A is better than vaccine B because vaccines are not tested against each other. Vaccines are tested against placebo, against a salt solution. So to say that a 95% efficacy vaccine is better than a 90% efficacy is, is uh, you know, you just can't say at this point. Point number three, uh, the efficacy of any vaccine drops a little bit when it goes in the field compared to the controlled situation in a trial. So keep that in mind. I think the most important thing is not to worry about you know, 80% versus 90%. The most important thing is to see whether the vaccines have been tested for safety in the population that it is meant for. I think that's very, very important. Uh, so I would say that the vaccines that are being tested in India, uh, the safety data is coming out. They appear to be safe. And of course, as time goes on, we we'll learn more and more about it. But it's also a fact that most of the adverse reactions happen during the first six weeks. And that is precisely the reason why emergency use authorization requires at least two months of safety data. So there is actually a science to it. Now, if you will allow me, uh, let me address what Dr. Gupta said uh, about whether uh, you know, the difference between infection and disease and transmission. Most vaccines that are available to us today that we take normally do not prevent infection. They prevent disease. Uh, and if a vaccine prevents disease, then logically the pathogen, when it goes into our body, it doesn't replicate or multiply to the extent that it would otherwise in a non-vaccinated person. And therefore, if the load of the pathogen is low, the possibility of transmitting to another person also reduces. So vaccines do prevent transmission. And I believe that these vaccines will also prevent transmission, not just disease. 